middle of the conference finals. There's a Canadian team in it. And who steals the headlines in Canada? The Wit Dog. <laughs> Travel snafu. What, what time did you leave the hotel on Sunday, Wit? Okay, first off, I'm so sick. This is <laughs> Same. this this is the most sick I've ever been. Negative COVID, negative flu, negative strep. I think it's just I have the Pearson. The Pearson Airport <laughs> disease. The worst place on earth. I will try to go through this. Now, first off, who the fuck knew that it was going to turn out like this? Because holy shit, did I send that video? I was like, oh, this is going viral. I turned into a Canadian hero to some people. They're changing. They're going to be changing rules and laws up there because of me. Like Grinelli said, I'm not kidding. Hundreds of TV requests. I said to everyone, tune into the next spit and chicken. I'll explain this. So my flight from Edmonton was at 10 a.m. I believe right at 10 30 AM. I don't, I don't remember. Some of these things are hazy, dude. This feels like it was like, it's like war where you just like really like, you know, black it out kind of. So I, I, I left around 10 30 at the airport in Edmonton. I said, uh, some air Canada worker, some random guy. He's like, Oh, you're going to Pearson. Good luck, man. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, that place is a disaster. I was like, Oh, Oh, what is all right. Like I was kind of like, geez, I guess I'll be all right though. I'm just going from there to Boston. Smooth, smooth flight. I mean, on time out of Edmonton, land in um Toronto, everything's going money, and I get through. So now you you clear US customs when you get to Pearson, which I don't really understand. I guess it's I don't know why you just don't go through US customs when you get to Boston. I don't know how that all works. So I get to US customs in Pearson and I see it was like a it was like cattle like like going on to like a cattle train or something it was like or all the bulls and cows kind of like forming a disgusting line trying to get into like where they need to go to get and, a bullet put in their head yeah exactly which I would have rather had done to me than what <laughs> I, I, I had coming up so I put my passport in for US customs and then it pops up like all right go to line two I look, dude, there's line one, line two, line three. There is just hundreds of people just pushed into this room. So the room has a big screen up top that says, this is the craziest shit. I'm like, this is how this works. So the room has the thing up top that says, when your initials go on the screen, proceed through to U.S. Customs. So I'm like, all right. Now, granted, dude, I had I had. Probably what I have. I must have had five hours till my flight. My flight was at 8.50 or 8.30. So I was like, oh, I'm fine. Like, this is kind of weird. But but there were so many people in this room. And and the 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 list of initials, like, first of all, the the, the writing is this tiny. I'm like up there, like, like size 12 font. Uh, on Dude, on, I can't on even. I needed RA's font from his phone. That's like size 56. <laughs> I'm like. Up there, I'm like, barely could see. And by the way, the worst part was the whole time there was a W-H-I. So it, so it had your it had the last three letters of your last name and then your, the initial like of your first name and then the city you were going to. There was a W-H-I and then an M, Boston. So every time these initials and it would go like there was two different screens, right? Because W is at the bottom. So like the second screen would be the W's. And I'm like, W-H-I, M. WHI um, keeps on Boston too. I'm like, when is that going to be an R? Now, in the midst of this, the whole point of this is that your bags, <laughs> so your bags have to clear through customs and then your initials go up on the screen. And you could continue to check. Now I'm sitting, okay, so I'm sitting in there about an hour and a half. Then I meet a kid. He comes up. He's like, look who it is. Another guy was sitting on the ground. I was actually laying on the ground like this. And some guy just stood over me with his phone and it was just the Chicklets logo. Like he was listening <laughs> to the podcast. And I, I went like this. Sweet. <laughs> so about an hour and a half, I meet this kid. Look who it is. Great dude. He was going from Halifax to Salt Lake City. His flight had, had left three hours ago. He was still waiting in this room. So he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's for work. I'll just go tomorrow, whatever. I'm like, so what am I doing? He's like, well, your bags need to clear. I didn't know until I talked to him. And he's like, actually, you could stick your passport underneath that machine over there. It'll tell you how many of your bags have cleared. So I did it zero out of two. Now, mind you, for everyone, why didn't you leave? You had the bags. I had my golf clubs. I'm not leaving. 
People told me you wouldn't have your bag for a month if you left. I, I had my golf clubs. So then an hour goes, another hour goes by. It's about two and a half hours. No, it's two hours now. I put it in. It says one of two bags. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, fine. Probably another hour or so. Get the third, get the second bag. I'm out of here. And I got plenty of time for my flight. Another hour goes by. It's now three hours. I put it in. It says one of two bags still, but it, there's a big red thing at the top. Please see Air Canada person. Oh, fuck. Now, listen, in this room, there was an Air Canada and a United desk. So if there was 300 to 400 people in this room, a hundred of them were in line for Air Canada. Not one person in line for United. The Air Canada line. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, I got to wait in this line now. And like, boom, I see up on the screen. My flight's canceled. So I'm like, oh, shit. But still, I'm not thinking it's the end of the world. Like, I, I don't know. I'm whatever. I'm just like, OK, so I so this kid now he needs to get in the Air Canada line. But he's like, I've been waiting to see if my bags will get cleared. So I'm like, well, dude, you want to just wait with me? He's like, yeah. So we go to the back of this. We go to the back of this line, 100 people in the customs room. He says, uh, dude, I, I no, I, I said, listen, I want to go up to U.S. Customs. I want to just walk through to U.S. Customs. He's like, no, I guess if you get up there and you don't have both your bags checked through, they're just going to send you right back here, which a bunch of people were saying. Like this kid came back, by the way. I was hand, you know how they called Joe Sackick, Jonathan Tave, Steve Eisen, like pros, pros. I was the pro pro of all this. I never flipped out one time. I was acting with a level head. I was acting like a mature adult. I bought this Tiger Phil book by Bob Herring. I was reading it. So I said, listen, I'm going to go up there and I'm just going to see if I can get through customs and I'll figure it out on the other side. I can't this room, dude, dude you couldn't get a water. You couldn't get a fucking meal. Come you on, buddy. Are you fucking serious? Couldn't get a water. That's so there was a there was a there was a, a what are those things? A vending machine. Oh, well, of like, course dude, there was. Seven yeah, you know, vent, for- you know, Canadian candy like Mars bars and shit. It's horrible. <laughs> I said, listen, man, give me your number. I'm going to go through customs. I'm going to try to go through customs. If he lets me through, I'll call you and I'll say, hey, you can go through without having both your bags tagged because mine weren't. So I, I walk out. So this is now, dude, it's now. I don't know, seven, it's like seven o'clock ish. I go through, I go to U.S. Customs. I'm fully expecting this guy to be like, sorry, your bags haven't cleared. Go back to that disgusting hellhole of a weight room. He lets me right through. I'm like, okay, fine. This is good. So I call the kid. I'm like, yo, they let me through. He's like, oh, great. Um, Now, mind you, I go. And he calls me back right away. He goes, dude, they sent me back. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. I don't like who knows? Who knows? This kid was so sad. He like thought he'd at least be able to get to the airport to have a beer or like wait. So I'm like, all right, sorry, man. Good luck. The, the, the guy's still been texting me off the hook. I think he's still at Pearson, this kid. <laughs> so he so whatever. All right. Now, now what am I doing? Now I have to go to Air Canada instead of the line in that hellhole waiting room. I have to go to Air Canada like whatever help desk Customs it was right service. in front of if people know pearson it was right in front of this this restaurant called heath that's what i'm trying to remember based on where i am based on like restaurants this restaurant heath so i get in this line dude this line is 400 people long there is two people working okay oh my god I'm just sitting in this line and I'm I, 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 like people around me are like, what's going on? What is this? And everyone's just like, this is crazy. Like everyone's in such shock that there, there's nobody working. And the problem is at the, I would. So this girl behind me, I was like, hey, let me go up and check some things or let me go to the bathroom. You hold my spot. Same for her. Like everyone's helping each other out in line. So I'm going up and watching this desk and and every person that goes up. Right. They need to get a new flight for the most time. For the most part, they need to get a hotel room. They need to get their vouchers. So every time you go up there, 20 air minutes. Canada person, it's like it's like 20 minutes a person. Fucking crazy. So it's like I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to like I'm like starting to think, like, am I going to be here for 10 more hours? Like, I don't think so, but like maybe. So I would say like three to four hours goes by and this guy walks from behind the desk and he gets to like the middle of the line. He's like, OK, well, we're moving this. Uh, we got to close this desk. We're going to move this. Um, just follow me. Follow me. And everyone's kind of like, whoa, flipping out. And people in the front of the line are like, well, I have to get in front of the people I've been ahead of. You know, it's like such a gong show. And the guy just starts walking away. So people start following him. But I, but I was like, 
well, they haven't closed the desk yet. There's still one person working there and a lot of people have left. So I'll just kind of wait here. And like, I don't want to follow them right now. I don't even know where they're going. Like, I, I'm in a line right now and there's one person still working. I get up towards the frontish part of the line. Boom. Window closed. But like basically like the DMV's closed. It's five o'clock. Suck it. Get your license tomorrow. Get home tomorrow. You piece of shit is what they said, basically. So then I'm like, all right, with the other people that kind of stayed, I'm like, let's go try to find this other line. We walk. It, then we went over to like, it was like F97. So it was like a different area. And I know this area because there was like a, a pigeon Air Canada lounge. Like there's the big Air Canada lounge. And then this was like the pigeon one over in this little weird part of the uh, equation or airport. Uh, terminal one, terminal one at Pearson, the worst place on earth. So, so, so I go there. And then boom, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Another three hours, say. They close this desk. Okay. Oh. Now, mind you, dude, the line for Canadian customs is now. I sent a tweet. If you could check out, maybe Grinelli could put the video of the tweet. Dude, the line for Canadian customs had to be 500 people and it was backed up. So you go down an escalator to like yeah. really where Canadian customs is. It was up the escalator way down the terminal. I took a video. So I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, no, no, we don't have to wait in that, right? We don't have to wait in that as they close. Every Dude, people are flipping out. Woman's crying. I, I kept saying, oh, my God, at least I don't have my kids with me. People had kids during this, dude. They had their kids with them. And then these people, as they close the desk, oh, sorry, sorry, go down there. They'll help you. Just like the biggest pass the buck, the biggest disgrace, the biggest I'm not helping you. I don't care. Unbelievable situation of our lifetime. I said, oh, my God. I actually was like. No, 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 no. We, we can't wait in that line. We've been waiting in line for six hours at two different spots. Now we have to go clear through Canadian customs again. Sorry, sorry. You'll figure it out. They just scatter off. I'm like, oh, my God. So we go wait in the Canadian customs lines. Now, mind you, dude, we get down to Canadian customs and all these people are like, whoa, what are you guys doing? What are you? We're like, we were told to come down here. We don't need we were just passed through American customs, but our flights are canceled. And then they sent us back here to go see the main Air Canada desk up at the original check in where departures are, where you'd go if you uh, the, the cab right. dropped you off. They're like, oh, OK, like, so do people are from our line are just like cutting in line because they're just trying to get up to where you could get through Canadian customs, like put your eye in the machine and, and get the tag. But when I was there for the, for the, for the score bet, that line was about, an, I would say an hour and 45, two hours in that instance, I kept, we were supposed to record the pod that night. And that's when we ended up backing it up because it, it, it took so long. So you're telling me that you were in this line and it sounds like where it started, where those double doors are, it was all the way up the oh. escalator and down the fucking terminal. Buddy, if you look at my video, go up that escalator from the double doors and then go way down. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like something out of a fucking novel that this is like actually the case at this airport. So I get up to Canadian custom guy. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, what? Where did you come from? I'm like, dude, I came from Edmonton. I went through U.S. Customs. They've been pigeon tossing me around for seven and a half hours. And now I have to go back to see the Air Canada attendant at the main floor. He's like, I don't know. What are you talking about? I'm like, you tell me. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. That was the worst part. We couldn't get an answer. I was like, I just want an answer. Everyone around me, like, we can't even get an answer. It felt like we were being held hostage at this place. So he lets me through Canadian Customs. He's like, dude. I, now, mind you, now I'm OK. So I've been on my phone. I'm like, I'm going to Buffalo. I'm getting my bags. I'm getting out of this country and this airport. And I'm just going to I'm going to get to Buffalo at 2 a.m. And I bought a jet blue flight at 730 in the morning from Buffalo to Boston. I'm like, whatever. Even if I get there at 6 a.m., I'll be fine. So I'm asking the guy after I get through customs, you go downstairs where all the bags are. And I'm asking baggage guys. I had like one hundred dollars. I'm like, can I get my bags here? Are my bag tags. He's like, I don't know where your bags are. One guy actually looked. He's like, dude, I have no idea where your bags are. I looked and I have no clue. I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm still with like three other people I'd been in line with. And we kind of stuck together as a team. And I'm like, all right, like let's, survivor. Let's, let's go up to Air Canada on the first floor. So we go up there now. Terminal one main entrance, the main Air Canada desk. There's 45 people in line. So I'm like, all right, well, we got another hour or so here. Okay, so I get up there. It's my turn. It's now 1 a.m. I said, I just need to get home. Can you just give me my bags and I'll, I'll be out of here? I'll be out of your hair. I know all of us uh, people are such pains in the asses to you people. I actually was super friendly to the guy, but I was like, just give me my bags, please. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't have your bags. 
I was like, why can't I have my bags? He's like, well, your bags are, are stuck in kind of no man's land They're, um You cleared American customs and now you're back in Canada and your bags, they can't go with you until you were to be like on the flight that your bags are now headed for. I'm like, I don't have a flight, dude. What flight are you talking about? So he said, all right, well, I'm sorry. I cannot give you your bags, but I will get you a new flight for tomorrow morning. I said, all right, well, listen, can I just go home and get my jet blue from Buffalo? I'm going to go to Buffalo and then you guys will send my bags no. tomorrow. He goes, no, 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 no. That's what he's saying. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't have your bags on a flight. You're not on. We could never send your bags on a flight. You aren't on. I said, well, what if I get on a flight and you don't put my bags on it and then you send them on the next flight? What are you talking about? They're on a flight that I'm not on. He's like, no, but you would have already flown on a flight and, and proven that you were willing to fly with your bags. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. OK, what time's my flight tomorrow? I have a flight for you at 850, sir. I said, OK, great. What time do I need to be at the airport to get through customs? Because how crazy this place is. He goes, I'd be here at 5 a.m. I'm like, all right, three hours and 50 minutes before the flight. I'll be here. In the meantime, I'd gotten a hotel. Thank you so much to Kelsey and Caitlin Walker and, and Kelsey Shaver at Barstool. They were helping me out the entire time. They got me the JetBlue. They got me an airport a hotel. Thankfully, they got me the airport, because the hotel, the Sheridan, because that thing was booked up. All these people, when I ended up getting there, went there too. And the people at Sheridan like, we have no rooms. So uh, thank you so much to them. Um, so, all right, now it's like 1.30, 1.45. I go over to the Sheridan. I check in, set my alarm for 4.30. Cause it's right there. I wake up, I go over, I go over to where they told me to check in. She's like, Oh no, no, you're at the wrong spot. I'm at number three. That, that that's domestic air Canada. You got to go to number 12, the 12th, like call them down there. So now I'm running down. Cause I'm just like, I just want to check into this flight and get through us customs. Cause then I'll be in the gate and I'll be whatever. I'll check my flight. So I get there. The woman says, uh, uh, you're not on this flight. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I pull up my phone. I said, no, I'm sweating already. I'm like, this can't be happening. I said, no, 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 no. I show her my Air Canada email. 850 lands in Boston, 1025. Seat 2F. No, 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 sir. Um, so about a couple hours ago, you were switched on to a Boston to Montreal and then a Montreal to Boston flight. I said, what? Or, or Toronto, Toronto to Montreal. Sorry, Montreal Toronto Boston. to Montreal and then Montreal to Boston flight. I said, what? But in my head, I'm like, all right. Like, whatever, I'm on that. I'll just get home. I just, I, I just get me home. But sorry, sir, that flight leaves in 50 minutes. You won't make it. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, no. Well, I have I, to I, see I'm, now la I'm laughing. I'm like hysterically laughing like crazy. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You, you know, <laughs> you stop messing with me. You. She's like, what, sir? I said, I never got an email. I never got a phone call. Well, I had this flight last night. I left. I, I said, I left this place four hours ago. I had this flight. When did you switch me to Montreal? She said, I don't know. I don't, I don't switch the fights. I said, no, no. So this guy comes over. And, and he could tell, dude, I am on like, I'm like clockwork orange, insane, like <laughs> losing my mind. He like types in all this special thing. He's like, okay, sir, we got you on a 10 o'clock to Boston. I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. I then go through customs. Customs was about an hour and a half. Not too bad, actually. I get down to the gate and I'm waiting around. And now it's 945. I'm at my gate. Okay. There isn't a person from Air Canada at the gate. So you're supposed to board at what? 930 for a 10 o'clock flight. Somebody finally shows up. In the meantime, I had had a bunch of very, very helpful, good people from Air Canada and Pearson, like DMing me like, hey, I can help. So I met a guy from Air Canada. He's like, dude, I'm going to help you out. So all of a sudden, right after I sent that video, a guy shows up. Mr. Whitney, Mr. Whitney. I'm like, yeah. Hey, how are you? I'm a concierge from Air Canada. How can I help? I go, I need to go home. Wet, wet. This flight's supposed to leave at 10. It's 9.55. When are we boarding the flight? He says, oh, I don't know. Sorry, sir. There's an Air Canada flight that landed, but they can't dock and get off the plane because there's no customs agents available to take them for into Canada customs. I was like, 
Oh my God. So we ended up boarding the plane about 1130, took off at 12 and I got home at one o'clock. So moral of the story is wake the fuck up, Canada. My, my, basically what I've been told and a bunch of people at the airport told me they have, so they have, they're so understaffed. Apparently, dude, I'm not getting political. Every person told me these vaccine vaccine mandates that they've forced so many people can't work. They're not allowed to work if they're not vaccinated. So I don't understand like what they're going to do. I, 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 dude, I actually, this guy there, Canada told me, he's like, Dude, this is going to be way worse come July and August. Oh, yeah. When everybody's fucking traveling. He goes, when holidays really start, I actually don't know what we're going to do. A guy told me hopefully June 30th, they're getting rid of all these ridiculously insane mandates they have for all these yeah. people and people COVID be able theater. to work again. But I'll tell you right now, there is not a crazier place in the world than Pearson Airport right now. There are no workers, customs, Air Canada, it doesn't matter. Nobody works there and nobody can help you out. And I'll say this, like the people who are there, they're doing the best they can. That's why it's hard to get upset at these people. Like it's not their fault. I don't even know who to get upset at, but I know that millions of people have gone through what I went through. Dude, there was a guy there that, that had been waiting 20 hours. He'd been waiting 20 hours to get to Dallas, Texas. And it's like, I don't even understand what the hell that airport's going to do if they don't get rid of mandates and allow these people to work again. Because this is Canada's like major hub. Well, buddy, it's so so it's I, I say it's a monopoly, right? Because Air Canada kind of runs the show and they basically control. That's what all Army of it. told me. Army just, was texting just, me. This just, is a monopoly. Just, you know, just like cell phone services there. And I know that with, the, the, you know, the nurses who didn't want to get vaccinated, they ended up firing a lot of them as well. My mother went to the hospital, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. She had an inflamed colon. She was in one of the worst pains of her life. She goes there. It took her about 14 hours to see a doctor in a town of 50,000 people. I think Welland might actually be even 60,000 now. One doctor working. She showed up in the afternoon, didn't get seen till 2, 2 a.m. in the morning. She had to go inside the car and sleep for a little bit. Like it, it was a, it's, it, it, it's a full-fledged joke. It's a full-fledged joke. The leadership's not very good. Um, as I mentioned about the, the cell phone services, like people are playing for just for a direct line in Canada, like 150, 170 dollars. I have like international plan in the states that cost me like a hundred bucks. It's 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 a it's it's a joke, man. So, so, so and, the, and, like, the craziest... and like you said, like you said, you didn't want to get political. It's just like this is what you're hearing from people you're talking to. Everyone so I, there's telling me the same a, thing. A, a, everyone there. So it's not even getting political. It's just the way it is. And obviously something needs to change. And the fact that the airport was like that and you had to go through that is an absolute shit show. And I mean, fuck, um, RA, Merle's, Grinnell, when you guys landed, when you guys were coming in for that score bet app uh, launch in Toronto, how long did you have to wait in the customs line? I've been so lucky. I don't mean, I don't mean to rub it in right now, but I, I was so lucky I walked right through. Oh, okay. You're the best. Yeah, uh, the score bet. <laughs> I, was, best, I, was two and, I was two and a half hours in the customs line on that score bet. Yeah. So, there you so go. the so the other great part of this is like, uh, I was talking to Mark Mathot and some other guys. They're like, dude, it's like the Ministry of Travel or some guy. This goon. I looked at this guy. He's an absolute clown. He says all the weights. He's blaming the travelers in Canada. These guys, these politicians are blaming the travelers saying people forgot how to travel over COVID when they didn't, they're not ready to take their belts off. They're not ready to get their computers. What? Out. These dude, this guy, these people, you travelers are causing these delays, not our ridiculously insane mandates that I'm not joking could ruin Canada. How much does Canada thrive on tourism in the summers? Big dude, time. Nobody's going to go to this place. You can't go to Pearson. I'm telling you, if you go to Pearson, you're the craziest motherfucker out there. I could have flown from Edmonton to Ireland, played around a golf, then gone to Boston <laughs> in the quicker time than I went from Edmonton to Boston through Pearson. <laughs> so we can move on to the hockey, but I'll no, never, I, I, I'll never was step a... foot again in that airport. I'll, I'll walk to Canada before I go to Pearson. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no way to treat a former NHL tough guy at all, but. Right. Oh, is see that, that article? It, NHL yeah. tough guys now the one take, <laughs> taking the beatings from Pearson. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I they should have led with that quote. Like, what was it? Um, what, what was the one you had? This place disgusting, or it's? Uh, I'm so in shock at this place. It is the biggest disgrace known to man. Somehow, mankind. The quote they put that you had in all the stories, I thought it was hilarious. I forget what it was. One of your typical fucking hilarious. I love quotes. too. So like, then it turned into like. 
privileged white boy oh, athlete God. complaining. It's like, okay, anyone in my shoes would have been complaining as well. And by the way, like, I love the other comments. Try going to Ukraine. You say that's the worst place on earth? I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, if you're actually comparing me calling Pearson the worst place on earth to Ukraine, you're the biggest loser on the internet. <laughs> the, the way I look at it, we had such a good time on the trip. That was just the fun tax you had to pay for us all with. Yeah, and I, so, that was the so fun tax you get for shaving my head, you fuck. I paid the piper hard. Well, you should have get fucking diddled by TSA like I did fucking leaving town. I would have rather gotten diddled by some enormous guy at TSA than what I did. He could tickle my balls. I could care less. Dude, I, you know the thing you stand in, like, you put your arms up and the thing goes around? Well, they didn't call me in, but usually just walk and stand there and, like, kind of look at the guy. He's like, oh, you moved, so we got to pat you down. I'm like, I can't just, like, go right back inside. He's like, nope. Do you want a private screen? And I'm like, no, dude. Like, I'd swipe. Dude, like. He didn't like grab my shit, but like it, it, you sh my shit got touched, dude. It's so fucking creepy, dude. Like the strangers like pat you down and he fucking his hands come in contact with your fucking genitals. It's fucking it's horrifying. You feel like so fucking violated, man. It's like what, like you really I don't have a bomb on me, dude. I'll, I'll pull my pants down. It was fucking all right. You should sue Pearson. Let's get him back. Oh, this was Logan, man. This was Logan. But then oh, okay. one of the other TSA guys was wicked nice. He was a, he was a chicklets listener. So it, it worked out fine. But what? I, so when, what's it take you with 26 hours from when so you I left hotel? Edmonton at. I don't know, t like two noon Eastern. And then, I yeah, I got home at like 115. So 20, 25 hours. Yeah, I, I actually lucked out because when I got to Toronto biz, my flight was canceled as well. Like I left, I think one o'clock Edmonton time in the morning and I got to so, uh, Toronto, your flight's canceled. That's when you texted me with, did you get here yet? And I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do now? And they're like, oh, we'll, we'll send you to Newark and then Newark to Boston. I was like, all right, so that flight was earlier. So I get to Newark, there's three Boston flights. Mine got pushed to like 2.30, but there was one taken off in like 15 minutes. So I did the fucking OJ through the airport. I mean, ran through the airport. I didn't kill two people. Did the fucking run through the airport. I'm like, buddy, is this full? He's like, do you got any bags? I'm like, I don't have to check in. And he's like, you're on. So I actually got home an hour before you did with. <laughs> Boston. Never been happier to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you That's left good. what? Like 16 hours after me? Like probably like, yeah, probably about 12 or 13 hours what after. A joke. Well, what we can get to the hockey day. now. Yeah. We can uh, we can stop bitching about yeah, airports. But unreal story, Wit. I'm never stop bitching about that. All right.